the action of the musical opens on a street scene in modern Singapore, in which two clerks from the East India Company of the early 19th century mingle with present-day modern Singaporeans. Within the head office of the East India Company in Leadenhall Street, the life of a clerk is drab. Eyebrows rise in a wild surprise if any new style shows. In spite of his naturally rebellious nature, Raffles has tolerated this situation for ten years, but he's not sure quite how much longer he can put up with it. It therefore comes as a total surprise that he's given a huge promotion that will take him to Penang in the Straits of Malacca. The prospect sets him on fire. His promotion does, however, mean that he will now be able to afford to marry his sweetheart, Olivia. His mother and two sisters are coming to Penang with him, and unfortunately for Raffles and Olivia, are rather unwelcome on his honeymoon. Five years later, Raffles visits Malacca with its incompetent resident, Farker, and drunken military commander Gillespie. A big stupid song with chaos all around, with people trembling in their shoes, the prospect on the ground. This gives you so, the when the blood gates open, it falls so white, and the faster bring disaster, flaming me. At a ball he throws for the visitors. Farker is, however, appalled to find that Gillespie has proposed that the risque new dance, the waltz, be indulged in. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
East India Company seizes Java from the Dutch and Raffles is installed as Lieutenant Governor. But Farker has plotted against him by sending secret charges back to the court of the East India Company in London. Raffles, who has regular severe migraines, is recalled from Java to face these charges. Raffles sees himself thrown down from his position as Lieutenant Governor by Farker and his treacherous manservant Blaygrave. Charges of a most serious nature have been laid concerning your conduct as Lieutenant Governor of Java. You are required to return to London forthwith. Raffles's health collapses. And Act One closes with his disgrace. Raffles and Olivia are back in London together with their daughter Charlotte. Raffles has been knighted, the charges seem to have been dropped, and his portrait is being painted. His mother, his sisters, and a group of modern Singaporeans cluster around to see it. Meanwhile, Olivia is contentedly playing with Charlotte. Raffles tells Olivia that he will return to the Far East as Lieutenant Governor of Ben Coolin. She begs him to refuse the appointment, notably for Charlotte's sake, because of the climate. But he is adamant. She feels she no longer knows the man she married. Raffles sees that the power of the Dutch is increasing and will cut off the British trade route to China. He resolves to found a fortified settlement on the island of Singapore without having gained the permission of the East India Company in London. Farker and Blaygrave resolve to delay him. The method they light upon 
is to make him ill by putting small quantities of poison into his drinking water. But the founding of Singapore goes ahead nonetheless. Raffles discovers discrepancies in the company's accounts and dismisses Farker. In a desperate attempt How to keep his position, Farker arranges for one more high. dose of poison, this time lethal, to be put into Raffles' water. There will be no delay. <laughs> but Charlotte is sick with fever and Raffles unknowingly gives her the poisoned water. Olivia sings a distraught farewell as Charlotte dies. One thing God gave me, and I called my own. I fed you, clothed you, and blind you, and loved you. But now you have left me heartbroken, alone. Beside herself over Charlotte's death, Olivia demands that Raffles resign from the company. I can't. My work isn't finished. But resignation and return to London does not prevent things going from bad to worse. Bearing in mind, therefore, the pension that the company would have been prepared to give you and the money that you owe the company, there is a difference of £22,000. You realise that the debt is payable on demand. Payable on demand. Payable Raffles is demand. almost broken in spirit. Maybe I should have stayed here after all. And had you done so, Singapore would never have been founded. Should I have stayed behind? <laughs> well, should I? Was it all worthwhile? The pain, the sorrow. But there was somewhere way out there I saw in my mind a light that led me way out there, that left me blind. Despite seeing their status and wealth vanish overnight, Olivia resolves to stand by him. Do you mind? The epilogue ties up the loose ends of history. Singapore has become a thriving, prosperous nation-state. 
Raffles' brave far-sightedness in founding Singapore is recognized, and we see his statue high and prominent in front of the Victoria Theatre as the company sings the anthem, Singapore.